What strikes you from the moment you hit start in Infamous First Light is how much more focused the entire experience is. Whether you're playing it before or after Second Son, you instantly understand protagonist Abigail Fetch Walker's punk rock personality. Her main theme haunts the start menu. Pain guitars marred with tragedy and beauty as synth electronics reverb in the background. Between your time in the DUP's training arenas and flashbacks to Fetch's brief run as a superpowered hitman in Seattle, you truly get inside her head. Better yet, her powers flourish, offering tactical options Delson could only dream of in Second Son. There's no question, Infamous First Light is a major step up from its source material in every way. As we touched on earlier, one of the major issues with Second Son was that its protagonist, Delson Rowe, was just sort of… there. Fetch, on the other hand, leaves a distinct impression, freed from the usual infamous morality system to act as she pleases because she's already a defined character with a pre-planned arc. Her struggle to save her brother while navigating the criminal underworld of Seattle makes you empathize with her, and they actually use parts of the game to hammer home their relationship. Fetch is just a girl who was born in a way society wasn't keen on, and only her brother has had her back all these years. It's a highly relatable story for a lot of people these days. The plot isn't going to blow anyone's mind, and you'll have predicted virtually every twist right away. But after Second Son, that's still an acceptable step forward. There's a narrative arc instead of several random hills and valleys strewn across a soup of blank void where character development should be. Side activities tie into either personifying Fetch's approach to solving problems or her personality, rather than just random objectives to pad the time. It also goes without saying that Laura Bailey remains top-notch as Fetch, though it's Laura Bailey, so that's pretty much a given. Plus, the moment you aren't worried about accruing morality points, which have been completely thrown out in every instance, you can truly embrace the sandbox. Fetch is as graceful and vicious as her powers, many of which are new additions to combat that greatly increase the variety of tactical options. There's even some new traversal moves added in that make collecting all the neon clusters around the world an absolute treat. Instead of morality charging your ultimate power move, it's simply how many enemies you take down, with an utterly devastating finishing move that summons a singularity wherever you are. Takedown options have also been streamlined with the return of the finishing blow system from Infamous 2, letting Fetch blast a small area of energy as she pummels an opponent. This move is a clutch save during the arena battles and can clear your way clean through any Seattle missions giving you trouble. What's best though is how Fetch's main arsenal is expanded with the simplest decisions. By enhancing your mobility and letting you infinitely dash from the start, you can finally explore the world with ease from the get-go, and only grow more powerful from there. There's even a few new combo moves and a whole new ability for stunning enemies for a quick takedown. Even your rocket ability, while never as devastating as Delson's bombardments, is an improvement thanks to automatic lock-on, letting you fire and forget a cluster of missiles. Unlocking all of this is incredibly intuitive as well, with additional upgrade points from both clearing the main missions and completing optional challenges, with some special post-campaign unlocks that warrant playing around to clear every challenge. I mean that sincerely, I platinumed Infamous First Light. It's not only doable, but extremely feasible for pretty much every player who hates how the average 100%ing of a game feels like a grind by the end. First Light is snappy, constantly rewarding, and richly packed with multiple arena scenarios to keep you busy, in addition to a few extra side activities to track down in the Seattle Free Roam after the story's done. This works because the challenges are always about pushing yourself just a little bit harder, aim a tad faster, testing yourself, raising the bar so that you can push yourself just a little bit further. Whether it's rescuing simulated civilians or just surviving as long as you can, the smorgasbord of instantly satisfying sound design and particle effects is superb. Everything you'd want from an arcade experience is here, keeping you psyched as you aim for the latest challenge. If you miss the likes of Rezogun and Nex Machina, First Light blends superheroic third-person action with these hyperactive tests of skill to perfection. That said, not everything about First Light is perfect. As I said, the plot has no real surprises and effectively lacks a proper ending due to Fetch's arc only resolving in Second Son. You can feel the restrictions holding First Light back from being a truly standalone experience that it deserved to be. I could easily see the game also having an epilogue chapter set in the wake of either a heroic or villainous end to Second Son, 
harnessing the loaded but blocked off lower half of Seattle to explore what was previously left to be explained away by a cutscene, but either that wasn't in for in the cards or there just wasn't time or budget for it. Instead, First Light just never feels finished. It's also odd how Fetch is the only conduit featured in Second Son to receive a DLC, especially since it treats her like she's a low-priority character. Eugene's video powers and Augustine's concrete bending each could have warranted their own expansions, but Eugene's limited to an off-screen role, and Augustine mostly just asks Fetch about her life while encouraging her to try harder. While still obviously the antagonist, Augustine doesn't actually seem all that inherently evil more lawful neutral. That's a complexity she could have definitely used in the main game, but it's so underexplored here that I can't be certain if this was just a writing oversight instead of intentional design. However, what is undoubtedly the biggest problem with First Light is how prone it is to crashing. Despite playing the game at the coolest times of day, First Light still sent my PS4's fan blaring harder than any other PS4 game. There were also two hard crashes in the middle of arena combat. While you thankfully retain completed challenges because it just considers them unlocked regardless of if you finish the match or not, if you're aiming to net a high score for the leaderboards, be mindful that the game can get overwhelmed. What's worrying is how you can never really tell what the cause is, as I'd sometimes have a crash with minimal effects in the starting arena, yet playing the hardest map up to wave 124, no issues arose, despite unleashing massive volleys and hordes of enemies chasing me. It's a shame, and further demonstrates that First Light could have used a bit more time to come together. Regardless though, it is a marvelous experience. This is what Infamous Second Son should have been in terms of game feel, in terms of actually making a character that you can like, and far as updating the franchise to be something to experience on a new generation of hardware. Given that Sucker Punch has seemingly left the Infamous series by the side now, it's not clear if we're ever going to see anything else further from this series, but if we do, I sincerely hope that they look to First Light, and not Second Son, for how to evolve the franchise further. Videos like these are made possible thanks to your generous contributions to the Unabridged Gamer Patreon.